By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a game between Urnum on Ice and the Beast's Toys. And before we go to the game itself, I'm briefly going to tell you something about the key cards in this deck. Now, if you would like to go straight to the action, you can look at the description below. There you will find a timestamp and that will take you straight to game number one. My opponent today is playing with Urnum on Ice. Now, this is a deck we've seen before, really a tier one deck. It's named after two key cards, Urnum Jin and Ice Storm. Now, an important aspect of this deck is winning the tempo game. And you want to do this by on turn one, playing a land, obviously, but also playing a Lunderer Elves or a Mox or something to get extra mana going, so that in turn two, you can preferably play an Ice Storm and take care of one of the lands of your opponent. That way, you have an extra land because you have a Lunderer Elf or a Mox out, and your opponent is losing a land. So you're basically, and you're ramping, and you're taking away a land from your opponent, so you're really winning the tempo game. Now, another way of doing this, of course, is playing a Disenchant on any uh, Moxen that your opponent may play out, and also the whole white package that is in this deck or four swords, four disenchant, I believe also a balance. Now this really helps to control the game later. So this deck has aggro elements early game, it has tempo game elements, and it has control elements. And obviously it also has uh, the blue splash, the power blue splash. So ancestral recall and time walk in this case. I don't believe there is a mind... Uh, there is a, sorry, a time twister in this particular uh, buildup of this uh, version of Urnum on Ice. So these are some of the key cards. Now let's go look at the other deck. The deck that I'm playing with today is the Beast's Toys. Now this deck is based on the Guardian Beasts. There are two in the deck and of course a lot of non-creature artifacts and there is a playset of Nevenerals Discs in the deck. So what I'm hoping to do is play the disc and use that to control the game blow the disc up when the time is right and because there's a guardian beast I can actually do that twice so ideally I have eight Nevenerals disc activations then I'm playing with a play set of anime deaths to get strong creatures back to the battlefield and kind of kill my opponent with his strong creatures or just bring my own creatures back and kill him with that I mean either way I'm, I'm flexible and also in the deck are, uh, is, is a package to kind of get me through early game because I want to get into mid game to activate my discs so in order to survive that long, I have an early game package. I play with Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre. That's the dream, of course, turn one, and hopefully it stays on the field. And then also I'm playing with a playset of Sinkhole. So by kind of taking care of uh, destroying lands of my opponent, I'm hoping to win time and get the game to uh, that mid-game, late-game level where I can start doing my Guardian Beast tricks. So the disc is just one of the uh, tricks that I have up my sleeve in this deck. So um, hopefully I can um, make make a fist against this tier one Urnum on Ice deck. So let's go to the games and find out. Game number one is about to start and there I go. I'm the player on the left side and I'm playing against Jupe with the Urnum on Ice deck on the right side. And there's his starting hand. So I'm seeing an Ice Storm there and I'm seeing a, a Black Lotus. It's a pretty good hand. And let's see what my hand is here. That doesn't look great. I, I see some, I see, I mean, you see a sinkhole and a strip mine, so that has some potential, I guess. So that's maybe why I'm keeping it. Um, see a factory here from Upside and playing a second swamp here, playing that sinkhole that I had in, in the opening hand. And hopefully I can find some useful spells because maybe I, I should have taken a mulligan. What do you think? Would you kept uh, this hand or would you have taken a mulligan? And look at this, there's that Black Lotus we saw earlier in his opening hand. Let's see, does he have a plan for it? Because if you play it out, you usually have a plan for it, or you keep it to counter, but I do know that in this Urnum on Ice build, there are no counter spells. And look at that, there's the If Biff Afrit, Afrit from the Arabian Nights, and there's a Sinkhole from my side. And the If Biff Afrit is a 3-3 flyer, and it also has a hurricane mechanic built in. So that means if, if he pays one green, or actually I can also pay one green if I have green mana, it deals one damage to each player and also one damage to each creature we're flying and it's quite interesting and as you see i'm already in trouble here and look at that killing my mistress factory i'm on 13 he's on 19 still and it's not looking great and what's he doing playing an ice storm losing another land only two lands left and i'm not sure if it was the right move to attack with that mistress factory obviously i want to put some pressure on Yoop, but 
It's not looking good for me. I need to get rid of that if bit for free. And he's attacking again. I have nothing to do against it. So I'm on seven, playing another Ice Storm. Wow, and this is really a killer. Um, I'm playing with Drain Lives in this deck. So I think I had one. I have one at this time in my hand, but I just couldn't get to three swamps because of all that land removal. And attacking here, soaring, animating my factory, dealing two damage. He's on 15, but I'm already on seven. And going to four here. Oh, and there's a disenchant. That is painful. And I'm checking to see how much artifact removal, how much land removal have you played. What can I still expect at this time? And look at that. I'm playing out another swamp. I mean, I need a terror or something. Playing a drain life. Unfortunately, I can only drain for two at this time, so not enough to kill the if biff of Reed. So I'm just draining him for two, gaining two life, going to six, but there's already a ping in return. And look at this, he's attacking me and then he's pinging and that's end game. That's, I mean, I don't know why I'm going to 10, but that's end game. So there you could see how powerful that if Biff Freed is with that build in hurricane mechanic. As long as you're ahead of the game, um, you know, you can deal extra damage. So you attack for three and then you use that hurricane mechanic to deal one, two or three extra damages. Super, super annoying uh, for me in this case. So I think... That card, maybe it should see more play. What do you think? Do you play the FB for free? If so, why? Don't you play it? Uh, let me know. But let's go to game number two. And hopefully um, I have, I can put up a little bit more of a, of a fight in game number two. Game number two is about to start. And I'm on the play after losing that opening game. So I need to win this one to get a third game out. And uh, I believe Yup has taken a mulligan. So he's going to... Uh, six cards will first drawing seven and then putting one on the bottom. So let's see how that goes. And there the card goes and here's my opening into a soaring swamp into soaring. Pretty solid. And he's actually not playing out anything. Very interesting. So maybe he has a library in his hand. Let's see. And yes, there's the library. So he now has seven in hand drawing number eight and i have that hypnotic specter in the field so that kind of keeps it even and there is a disenchant that's gone and i've played a mishra's factory let's see what else i can do and i'm playing a demonic tutor interesting and am i going to look up a mind twist and just playing a huge mind twist on his hand that would make sense Curious. And I'm playing a Mind Twist of two. I'm not even waiting for the next turn. I just want to deactivate that Library of Alexandria as fast as I can. And he's playing a Mox Pearl. And attacking. And I'm not even animating my Mishra's Factories now. And he's going down to four cards in hand. And look at that. He's getting rid of an Ice Storm. And oh, this is nice, using my animate that to get that gin. Wow, so I've got a four or five powerhouse now. So this is great. This is kind of what I want to achieve with that discard is use my animate debts to kind of take the big creatures from my opponent and use it against him. Obviously, it doesn't always work, but when it does, it's quite nice. And I'm using my disrupting scepter here and he's discarding an another urn and gin. And that's pretty risky knowing I'm playing with those animate debts. And there goes another, oh, and I'm even playing another Hypnotic Spectre there. What I want to say, there goes another Ice Storm. And it looks like this game is in the back, but then again, I've lost often uh, against players in the very last minute. So it's not over until it's over. And it looks like I'm changing my mind there instead of a full-grown attack. And he's losing two cards. I'm discarding the other one, and I'm playing a sinkhole. So I'm playing it very safe. Maybe we should have just killed him that game, uh, that other turn. But okay, I'm winning this second game. Again, a very quick game. It's 1-1. Uh, one, one. So nice. We're going to a decisive third game. Game number three, and it's 1-1. One, one. 
and uh, Yup is on the play after I won that one, so that's nice. Hopefully I can do something similar. He really couldn't get into his game. Oh, look at that. I, apparently I took a mulligan here, and for some reason I'm starting, so I guess I could start this one. That's a bit confusing. And I believe I took a mulligan as well. But anyway, uh, let's look at the game. Because of that Mishra's workshop, I'm able to play an early Disrupting Scepter. And that's quite nice with that full hand. And there you see him tapping for three. And using an Ice Storm. This is quite nice. He's using it on my Swamp, realizing how important black mana is for me. And I'm using the Disrupting Scepter again and passing turn. And uh, that's one of the tempo games that I talked about in the introduction. With that Lanawar Elf, he's able to play that Ice Storm at turn two and really getting a land advantage or a mana advantage, I should say. Um, let's see what he's going to do. He's lost quite a lot of cards because of that Disrupting Scepter. Ooh, interesting, a Whirling Dervish. Ooh, and that's that's a very difficult card for me. Hitting me for two here with that Pendlehaven and that Lanawar Elf. And that Whirling Dervish could be a serious problem for me. It's still small now, but I need a disc to stop it, I guess. Haven't seen a single disc activation in this matchup so far, which is quite strange because I play with a full playset of discs. Haven't even seen one hit the table. And there is a Chaos Orb, and I'm orping the Whirling Dervish. And I'm actually doing it again because it was quite a quite a low flip. I'm not gonna put it on slow mode this time um, because you cannot really see the flip from the from the angle, unfortunately. Uh, but it's a hit, so the whirling dervish is gone. And look at that. <laughs> he's uh, he's using a regrowth to get his whirling dervish back. Oh man, that's very frustrating. And let's see what else I can do. Okay, that's a blocker as well. And playing a sinkhole. And that sinkhole is very important because because I could I can get rid of that Pendlehaven. It means he cannot pump his Whirling Dervish, and so I guess I can block it with the Mishra's Factory. But this is kind of interesting. I'm choosing to use the Disrupting Scepter instead of keeping my Mishra's Factory open to block the Whirling Dervish. Does mean that the Whirling Dervish is a two-two now? So that's a bit risky for my part. I mean, I can still kill it because the Factory can pump itself. Oh, look at that. He's losing. Oh, that's bad news for Yup that he's losing that Swords to Plowsiers. And I have to pass turn. And now I need something useful here to get me through and kind of win this, this game. Playing another sinkhole on a tropical island. Oh, no. And this is deadly. Playing that strip mine, and oh, this is very, very bad news. I really need a disc. And yes, there it is. There's a disc. So hopefully I can blow up the field next turn. First, he's attacking me, swinging in, and look at those dervishes. They, I mean, they grow pretty quickly. I'm on six measly life. And hopefully he doesn't have a disenchant. And there goes the Lana where I'm blowing up the field. <laughs> Everything gone. Whew, I'm still alive. I mean, remember, my, my uh, Yup is still on, uh, on 20. <clears throat> That's what I'm trying to say here. And I'm on 6, so it's still not great. But at least we saw a disc activation. And there's a balance. Oh, that's brutal. That is brutal because I'm losing all those cards. The advantage that the Disrupting Scepter kind of build up for me, I'm losing it now. And I only have two lands. And we're just kind of like passing turn, building up the board state again. And there is a Sylvan Library, really nice here at this stage in the game. Playing a disc. So all of a sudden it's raining discs. And my brother is still in a pretty high life total. Look at that, he's taking two extra cards, filling his hand up. Playing a recall. Oh my goodness, so he's really getting back into that card advantage thanks to that balance. And I kind of feel like I have to blow up the board again just to get rid of that Sylvan Library. I'm kind of in doubt because at the same time I know he has a full hand. So I know when I do blow it up just for the Sylvan, he's, he will start to play out threats like there's no tomorrow. So I guess I'm just deciding not to do it yet. But I mean that Sylvan gives so much advantage. 
and he's tapping three. There's there's some glare on the card, so we can't really see the dual lands. There's that if bit for freed again that we saw in game uh, one, and oh, there's a terror. That's quite nice. It's a very dangerous card for me that uh, if bit for freed, especially when you're when you're uh, when you're behind the if bit for freed. You don't want to see that card because of that building hurricane mechanic. And playing an ice storm here, and now the question is, am I going to activate the disc or not? And I decide to do it. Maybe this is a bad decision because why not just allowing uh, Yup to place threats out, and then after, in my turn, activate the disc? But I guess I was afraid maybe of some kind of removal. But then again, that's instant speed. So I think this is kind of a misplay from my part. Although, wait a minute, no, if you disenchant the disc, then the, the the disc's effect still resolves. It doesn't work like a Chaos Orb. So I guess that makes sense then that I use that mana to activate the disc. Anyway, to make a long story short, I activated the disc, but he had another Sylvan in his hand, so it's not really helping me out here. I'm on 5, he's on 10. And I'm playing another disc, wow! This third game is full of discs. This is the third disc that I'm playing out. That's crazy. And I wonder what I'm going to do now with those Mishra's factories on the table. Passing turn. And he's activating his factory. And I'm activating the disc again. At least getting a two for one here from my disc. So I guess that kind of makes it worth my while. And he's playing a Time Walk. And he's playing a Chaos Orb. Oh man, nice play here. Finding a Sarah Angel Suite on the top. Well, actually not finding it. He probably put it there for after my activation with the disc. And playing a Hippie, but he'll probably use a Chaos Orb to get rid of the Hypnotic Spectre and hit me for four. Or maybe just attacking me knowing that I will probably Chump Block. Let's see what he's going to do. Just attacking, I'm chum blocking here. And that's typically Yupi, he's a very patient player, which usually pays out. And I have to bring it back, and that's very unfortunate. If I would have had another terror, I could have terrored the Sarah Angel. But now I guess I'm just buying time, hoping to draw into a terror or something or another piece of removal. I'm on five, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> another another anime death. That poor hypnotic not expected. They, they keep bringing him back, digging him out of his grave and saying, okay, hippie, you have to go one more time. And all he does is really chum block. Such a powerful, beautiful creature, only being used to, to chum block. But he's buying me time. I'm hoping to find a terror or something else that can help me here. Or an abyss. An abyss is quite nice. But he's using his. And there it is. It's a hit. He's using his Chaos Orb to get rid of the abyss. Oh, 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 oh. And that's a good thing about uh, you being a patient player, keeping that Chaos Orb on the table until he really, really needs it. And there's a Guardian Beast, but it's not going to help me. And that's game. So, um, Ernam on Ice is winning this again. But what a cool third game it was, and what a nice matchup here. So, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to watch another... Um, old school magic match uh, just click on the uh, videos that are appearing right now on the screen or uh, visit the channel we have more than 90 uploads i believe almost 100 old school magic related uploads and a lot of old school matches so feel free to go there if you want to help the channel like this video leave a comment Subscribe, that's even better, and share the video with your friends. For now, thank you for watching this episode, and see you next time.